So I'm, I'm going to move on now to the final um, presentation of the day, just to say a few words about inspections and evaluation process. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, I mean, we have a lot of uh, requirements and objectives and uh, to satisfy, and I suppose the the audit requirements are central to that, to prove, proven, I suppose, um, underpinning what we're doing in any any scheme that, that we're involved in. So we have to ensure that there's a high compliance rate and what we're paying for is, is what we're getting. So we're ensuring that public value for good. So as usual, we'll have a minimum of 5% inspections, but we will try to do more due to the fact that it's a pilot project and we want to really test out what's, what's happening on the ground. So our inspectors are all getting the same training and, and attending these sessions as well as yourselves. Uh, we'll be looking at a combination of random and risk uh, process as usual, looking at the coverage of as many of the advisors as we can, looking at scoring patterns, quality of photos, etc. So we'll be doing this as, as uh, both randomly and doing desk checks on, on files as well to see how this process is working, how is implementation going with the, the project. So looking at the looking at the scores, doing a lot of data analysis, and this is where GLAM and, and the AgriSnap will, will help guide us, um, you know, to, to target these inspections and uh, monitor progress, essentially. So on the on the field side of things, I suppose we, we will be, again, looking at the suitability of fields, as, as Tara covered yesterday, looking at the critical components for both lig and multi-species lay, so it must be have less than 30% ryegrass as was covered and have indicator species of two, minimum of two for the scorecards to, to work. And it must be predominantly grass and not contain header. Now there has been one or two questions uh, in the chat. I mean, if there's one or two sprigs of header, I mean, that's not going to be an issue from an inspection point of view. So if there's a, a tra what we call a trace amount of header, in a parcel that that, will, that that shouldn't be an issue. Um, it's very important as as Tara has already highlighted but the multi-species lay that it, it goes into an appropriate site and what we mean here and again there's a bit of confusion about the permanent grassland stands that are permanent pasture. In, in BPS the majority of grassland unless it's temporary grassland in a, in a tillage rotation is, is going to be classified as permanent grassland. So we're not talking about relying as such on the BPS classification, but it's rather what you see on the ground. So an inappropriate site is somewhere which is already species rich or semi-natural grassland, these type of sites, and, and these mustn't be converted to multi-species lay. And as we pointed out earlier, the, the multi-species scorecard is, is, uh, is not advantageous in these sites anyway, economically, because the, there are much higher awards under the league scorecard for these type of these type of sites, but it's just to, to, to bear in mind a word of caution here that uh, it, there's a severe penalty if, if, if this is if this is the breached. So we'll be doing the usual area and boundary checks. And again, just I suppose to clarify at this point, uh, because of some confusion about it, but what you're doing in GLAMS and Tom clarified yesterday that he will provide a test system for you to, to actually practice on. Uh, before the system goes live is that GLAMS is completely independent of the LIPIS. So you will see a replica of the LIPIS parcels as such, but when you do any changes or draw or split parcels, that has no impact on the LIPIS or BPS application in 2021 or 22. And this is because it's a pilot project. So we're, we're just creating and managing these fields for specifically for this short term project for over two years. So it's, it doesn't have any impact on, on the BPS side. Um, so inspectors then will basically be repeating the scorecard process from questions one to nine in league and MSL, looking at the mapping accuracy, the, the field boundaries, etc., and where there's margins claimed, obviously, and what are the condition assessments of the boundaries. So just basically going through the same process as yourselves and seeing if there's any differences. We'll be looking at geotag photographs as well, and looking at the appropriateness of, of management advice. But as I said earlier, the management advice itself. Is, is purely advisory, but it's between yourself and the farmer. And it's just to see, you know, if, if there are things they can do to further improve their score in year two. We'll be checking seed labels. Tara mentioned this morning that there's two options regarding seed labels 
or sorry, regarding MSL, I mean, you can either score it based on the seed label, the number of herb and legume species there, or if it was sown in the previous year, you can you can just uh, do the, the usual W walk and, and count what species are in the, the field. So depending on which option was selected for the field, that's what the inspections would be checking. So just to mention a couple of words on the penalties as well, obviously it's it's a it's a pilot project, but it's also a results-based project. So the penalties types are different to a normal scheme, as it were. So we'll be looking at uh, differences in score and a potential differences in score between the original assessment. And we will be inspecting these cases as, as, as soon after as we can as uh, from your own scoring. And we'll be paying on the score found, whether that's higher or lower. Again, that's some, a, a kind of a unique feature to results-based schemes. So if, if, if the, if, for example, the score is higher after inspection, the farmer will get the credit for that. But obviously, if, if it's lower, it'll be paid on the lower. And uh, and the usual um, terms apply regarding any appeals of, of, of different nature. But that's something that can be addressed later. So there are also some tolerances allowed. I mean, we don't expect uh, everyone to score things exactly the same. So we have a tolerance of the 20% looking at the farm level. So if there's a number of fields, it's only if there, if the differences are higher than twenty percent that a penalty might apply, where which would be equal to the monetary amount of the overclaimed amount. So it's basically a calculation of the difference in payment received before and after the the assessment or the inspection. So that that's quite a high tolerance as well, I suppose, compared to to different uh, other compared to other results based schemes. Um. Just to mention again, I suppose the, the complementary actions as with last and other schemes, so you're paid on the amounts found. And again, we'll be checking specification issues. For the late meadow bonus, I've already said that it must indicate which field uh, has been applied for on LAM. It will be questioned at the end of the, just after the scorecard for this. And also a geotag photo must be received within five days of the event itself so that we can assess the event, you know, uh, remotely and the idea I suppose is we're trying to use technology to our advantage um, both for yourselves and ourselves and it's, the, it's really to test out these options in, in during the period of the project. So area cl over claims, cross compliance and these things which we dealt with in the usual manner. Uh, I mentioned evaluation and it is a critical um, issue. I mentioned this yesterday we have to basically prove the effectiveness or should demonstrate the effectiveness of any public scheme funded scheme or project. So uh, there will issues be arise and there's a, we welcome your feedback and comments so far to the last two sessions. We're getting a lot of comments and we will be addressing them all. It's just not possible to address all questions in, in the short time frame. So it's uh, very much see this as a shared learning experience for ourselves and yourselves and all stakeholders. Um, so we have to look back on the project ob objectives and uh, see how they're pro progressing through a number of challenges both uh, you know administrative from budget point of view and IT systems etc uh, interaction with yourselves and there's there's a lot of factors to consider so we will be doing an evaluation after year one and year two in the autumn um, so we'll be looking at I suppose the the the, the data analytics side I suppose looking at the field scores uh, what's happening on the ground, what's the uptake of, of field margins, that type of thing, and your advice and uh, your feedback uh, as well as the, the farmers will be a key aspect of this. So we, we hope this will, I suppose this will be on an ongoing basis, but we'll also have uh, formal aspects to this in, in later on in the autumn, uh, where we look at uh, questionnaires to yourselves and, and participant farmers. We'll also uh, plan on further webinars and, and discussion groups uh, to, to, to see how the project is progressing this year. Um, we will be open to your own suggestions in this regard. And I suppose just, just to, yeah, just to, just to wrap up, that's really it. Uh, and the, just the key timelines to reiterate, um, if you're talking to farmers over the coming days, that if they're availing of that late meadow option, if they're thinking of cutting, now maybe it might be worth a while waiting until the first week of July when the, they can send in a geotag photo and claim it. Um, 
the leg assessment has to be in by the 31st of July. Uh, obviously, I know there's some concerns out there about the, the time frame. There is some advisors will have more approved applications than others. Um, but I think once you get to do one or two assessments, it will probably get quicker as you get to know species and the process as well. So over time, uh, those of you who have more applications will get, I suppose, it, it, it'll be easier to get through them. Um, and the multi-species lay, the deadline there is the 15th of August, so they can still be sown uh, and planted up to that date. And they can be scored off the seed label. You don't have to wait for the crop to emerge. But we will want to see that if the margin, if there's margins being claimed at that, that the fence would have to be up at the time the geotag photo uh, is taken. So there's no use saying there, there will be a margin there. We have to see the fence itself, which can be a temporary fence. So just to clarify on that as well, because I know there's some questions on it. Um, margins are completely optional for farmers. It's it's there's no requirement to put them in in either leg or multi-species lay, but what they are is there an option if someone want, is at the lower end of the scoring and they want to improve their scores by one or more points. Obviously the wider margins and the, the longer they are the better, but farmers themselves can decide to put them on one, two or three or all sides of a field. The, the options is, is completely up to them. There's I suppose just when I uh, remind on that as well with the leg, uh, there has been one or two subsequent questions on this issue of the 35 marks in relation to the league scorecard. That again, if 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 a, if a farmer on the league scorecard and only plays the league, not MSL, if they score 35 or more on questions one and two, they automatically get that margin score. So, but if they don't, there's no requirement at all to put in any margins, but it's only if they want to, it's just an option for them if they want to improve their score further they can they can it's also possible like for a farmer to score 30 on leg but get the full boundary mark and he could still get uh 30 for leg plus 15 marks for the boundary score without doing any margins that would be a score of 4.5 which would round up to five so it's just it's it's important to be aware of the dynamics of the scorecard every question obviously contributes to the score but there's no obligation on any individual question other than that you must have the minimum species obviously to score on question one. So I'll move on, I suppose just, uh, yeah, I mean, I've already spoken with the evaluation, so this will be in the autumn period and it's expected that payments will occur from December onwards. So th that's basically all I have to say on the, on, on, for this presentation. Um, it, 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 I suppose it's very important for all, all of us as, as stakeholders in this process to be able to um, implement the, the projects as, 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 as well as we can. We, we have challenges on, on all sides and we acknowledge that and, and yourselves, but it's very much, I suppose, a shared learning experience and we, we welcome your feedback on any aspect of it. We will be looking through the, the questions which have come up and comments through the the, the two sessions afterwards and we'll be reverting on that as Tara said we will we are planning uh, to put together a, a document to summarize the, the, the requirements from the, the the various presentations to put it in in one place you also have the reap uh, the various documentation information leaf that's been sent out to you hopefully towards the end of next week we're waiting on the the printers for the ID um, ID booklets so, and the species identification. So when we have them all together, we'll, we'll send them out to you. Monitoring evaluation, as I it said, it's, it's, it's a key aspect. So uh, we look forward to engagement on that. And it's, it, it is here to stay, as Owen mentioned at the start of yesterday's session, we expect results-based schemes and measures and actions to feature highly in the next CAP design. So any investment of your time in this project will be uh, well worth it and it'll help you prepare you for that process and for the the environmental schemes ahead. So I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Um, just a reminder that we had again about that, you, that new URL for REAP uh, where you'll find all the information. We'll be putting up all the presentations from the, the two sessions up as well so you can watch back the videos and we'll put up the video that 
Tara showed earlier as well, and one or two people may have sound issues with that. And we'll be reverting on the the GLAMS as well, that test system, and keeping you updated when the AgriSnap and GLAM systems are are live. Uh, hopefully towards the end of the week, we'll have an update on that for you. So with that, I'll, I'll close at this point. Thanks to everyone for their attention uh, over the, the two sessions. We are, again, if anyone wants to re-register or look back at any of this part, they can register for the, the either or the sessions next week, session A or B, or they can watch back to uh, when we put the presentations up on the, the website. So thanks again for your engagement and we look forward to your continued engagement and and uh, feedback throughout the process of this project. Thank you.